Hi all, in this video we are going to see about what is NAT and how NAT works. Let's get into the concept. First of all, what is NAT? NAT is nothing but a network address translation. What does it do? Uh, it converts a private IP address to public IP address. Why it should be converted? Means um, in the internet cloud, the private IP address are not allowed. That is, they are not routable into the internet cloud. Only the public IP address are being allowed in the internet. So that's why why we are using a, a private IP address in the local LAN. It should has to be converted to a public IP so that uh, we can able to use the internet access. That's the main reason we are using a NAT. Without NAT, we couldn't. We will. Uh, we are unable to use the internet. Okay. Um, what are the types of NAT? There are three types of NAT. Uh, it was static, dynamic, and a PAT. PAT is nothing but a port address translation. So, what is static NAT? That is uh, one to one ratio. Simply said, that is one pub private IP will be converted to one public IP is to be as a static net that is we need to convert a single private IP that is a uh, host network containing a single private IP address will be translated to a public IP and then to reach a internet and again comes back to the pub, uh, private IP segment for reaching a internet access only one PC can be used that's what I call it as a static net but in case of dynamic net uh, we will have a particular set of IPs that is uh, consider you are having uh, 192.168.1.0 slash 24 segment in your local end. It's around 200 computers. Okay. Uh, suppose if each of the computers need to access the internet, consider to be as a Google server. All of them try to reach uh, internet. Um, if one PC gets connected, it can be converted to a public IP and reach. But at the same time, if another PC also wants to reach a particular website of a uh, internet it also has to be converted to a public IP well in case of uh, if you are having a single IP like a static NAT one IP is already be converted to a public IP so it is not possible but in case of dynamic NAT we need to get a particular IP segment from the ISP um, consider to be as a public IP segment as 1.1.1.0 slash 24 that is the private IP of 192.168.1.0 slash 24 will be converted to 1.1.1.0 slash 24. Each um, private IP will be converted to unique public IP. That is 1 is to 1 ratio. One PC will be converted to one public and another PC will be converted to another public. So this way uh, it works, a dynamic NAT. Uh, this is a, then move on to PAT, Airport Address Translation. Uh, this is the most familiar one nowadays. Uh, the reason is uh, we can convert a n number of private IPs into a single public IP. That is, if you are having a IP segment of 192.168.1.0 slash 24 segment and you are having a single public IP address. So, if one PC gets converted to a, is trying to access the internet, converted to a public IP and accessing the internet, if other computer also needs to connect to the internet, it is not possible so PAT plays a vital role over here so what does it do means uh, it converts each it uh, not convert it creates each um, private IPs that is trying to translate into a public IP with a particular port number so if uh, first one is 182.168.1.1 gets translated to a public IP it creates uh, that 192.168.1.1 IP segment with one particular port number. So it will be considered to be as a single port number. Suppose if another PC also wants to communicate with the uh, uh, internet at the same time, it will create another port number. So every computer, all the computers can access to the internet with a single public IP based on the port number. That's what is called as a port address translation. So now let's into the concept of how NAT works. Uh, this is our scenario that we are going to see about how NAT works. Uh, here is a computer that is, um, and here is our router that is a customer and router or our home router, whatever it be. And it is being connected to the cloud 
and here is the dns or dhcp or whichever the financial server or whichever the server that we are using or any internet servers whatever it be and this is the organizational router from the router it is being connected to the server and how does it works just look into it first initially we are having a pc over here um if suppose if you are trying to reach this server so what does it do it will give the uh, source ip of 192.168.1.1 this pc source ip where the destination of a.a.a.8 .a 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 will be generated in this router and this router will forward a packet to the cloud uh, the cloud sees this destination a.a.a.8 .a 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 .a. it forwards to the concerned uh, destination so it will be reached by the server the server responds to the uh, packet that it received with the source as a.a.a.8 .a 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 and the destination as 192.168.1.1 so what is um, the next process is it will forward a packet to the consent router and this router will forward to the cloud internet cloud so internet cloud will check the destination ip address 192.168.1.1 so what happens over here it checks this as a private ip so in internet the private ips are not routable that is they are not allowed in the internet so automatically it discards a packet and um the routing or we couldn't be able to reach a particular site that we want to reach so this is what happens in a normal scenario so how nat works here means um if the same uh, considered to be as the same concept of we want to reach this server so we are just um say reach a dot a dot a dot eight over here so this router gets this information with the source one into one picture one dot one and the destination as a dot a dot eight this router does a NAT concept. So, uh, what does it do means it converts the private IP that it has 192.168.1.1 into the public IP of NATing that is uh, to which IP it has to be converted to the source 192. In this case, we are using a 192.168.1.1. So, it converts 192.168.1.1 and with a destination of the consent server that we need to reach. So, it converts. Uh, source ip that is from 192.168.1.1 to the NAT, natting ip that we are converting that is the public ip 192.168.1.1 and it will be given to the cloud and the cloud, cloud will do the routing process and finally it reaches the server the server responds to the uh, destination as 192.168.1.1 as it only sees the ip as 1.1.1.1 it will not seize about 192.168.1.1 it has no idea from where um, that is behind a 1.1.1.1 so it only sees about uh, the 1.1.1.1 so it forwards the packet to the consent router so the cloud sees this with a destination of 192 uh, sorry 1.1.1.1 and uh, it forwards the packet since it's a public ip it's routable it forwards the packet to the consent router in this place that is a uh, c router what does it do it again retranslates the public ip into a private IP that is um, from 1.1.1.1 to 192.168.1.1 with the source will be the same that is from this server the source will be the same as a.a.a.a.a .a 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 and the destination will be 192.168.1.1 it retranslates and gives to the consent PC so we could able to reach the consent server so this in this way the NAT works um this is basically in the form of a static net while in case of dynamic net we use a n number of hosts and a n number of uh that we have a public ip segment we will get it from isp so concept remains the same but the configuration but it, uh, it will be a little bit different in case of uh sta dynamic and pat so however we do the configuration in the lab part that's it about netting concept. I hope you understand this concept. Thanks for watching. Until next time.